So, did everyone open up After Effects in the background? We're going to go light tonight as a little treat. But I have to see what you can and can't do. So let me know right away, okay? Because your machines might not be able to run this, all right? Everyone ready? Okay. Okay, you can hear me, correct? Good. Okay, here we go. Just zipping ahead to my notes. Okay, we're going to try this. We're going to go File, New, but try the bottom one, Maxon Cinema 4D File. Does anyone not have that option of Maxon Cinema 4D? Okay, good. Okay, good. That's two. Okay, that's three, four. And was the last person Kelly that we have to hear from? Okay, great. So we'll just call it test and put it on the desktop. Okay, so we named it, put it on the desktop, then it's just click OK. And it's just a matter of waiting for Cinema 4D light to open up at that point. Mine is down here at the bottom, flashing. Are you kidding me? It didn't keep my... Ah. Okay. So I'm going to need to re-register... Uh, All right. So this did launch for everybody, correct? Uh, okay. Well, it my. Hmm? It took a while, but it, it, so are we supposed to like, log into this Maxon thing? Well, yeah, if you already created a. Uh, I, I mentioned it last week or the week before to create something. So I'm going to try and. Uh, one second. I'm going to try and re-log into mine, but I have to stop screen sharing uh, when I log in. One second while I do that. So I'm still on. I'm just trying to remember my Macs on. Username and password. Okay, that was it. I actually remembered it. So now I'm going to turn back on screen share. Let's see, where is Zoom? Here's Zoom. Okay, can everyone see Max on Cinema 4D? All right. So I'm going to close the splash screen. Like I said, I'm going to keep it light tonight. I just want to see whose machines can actually handle this. Because uh, Professor Jones has been pushing me for the past half decade to do more 3D. I'm like, you need, <laughs> you need a pretty powerful machine to do 3D. But I want to give everyone an introduction to 3D so that you're not flat-footed once you get out of school. You know what I mean? Like, this is actual serious... 3D as opposed to what they have in After Effects. Because like, Dino, you were saying in this, now you can create a sphere. So you got far more shapes. You can make pills like capsules, pyramids. 
you know, plus so much more. So if you guys can run this, awesome. And if not, you'll have my pre-recorded lectures for when you need them. Is everyone still spinning up? Oh, okay. So uh, wait one second. Was that Sarah? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So you're up and running. Okay. And if anyone else is able to get up and running, let me know. Okay, so it's still spinning up, but it didn't crash on you? No, it didn't crash. Okay. Mine's up. All right, great, Alan. So that's half the class can do it. And Dino's was spinning up last we heard. And then uh, Kelly. Um, it crashed at first, but it went starting. Like it opened up the starting mm -hmm. thing. Kind of okay. Yeah. So none of you are ever going to need to do a project in Cinema 4D Light in here. But 3D is a part of you know basic motion design, and like I said, you. You all can run the most basic 3D engine in After Effects, but this is the stronger one that it's got access to. So I'm going to give you just a real quick intro to this, and then we'll call it a night. Because um, I figured you all could use a little bit of a break. So I just made a cue by clicking the cue button, or if I wanted to make something different, I would uh, hold down on it and choose something different. So... I'm right here in the cube. And, you know, just like in After Effects, you've got your selection where there's the scale and position for your object. Now, to get to the edit mode, because there's one thing I want to show you real quick. Just looking for the quick man for it. How do you get to edit mode here? I haven't used this program in so long. Let's try. Okay. So there's object mode. That's probably what they call it in here. I'm just looking real quick. It'll just take me a second. Oh, okay. This is probably the button I was looking for all along. Make editable. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a real quick intro. Like right up here was the make editable button. And when you're doing 3D, you've got a vertice, like a vertex point. Two points make a line, okay? Four lines close together make a face. So is everyone able to see that? Like this is a face. That's a line or an edge. And these are vertex points. Everyone got that? Yes. Okay. So that's your basic. And I guess this is to go back out of there. Let's try model. Yep. So model mode allows you to move stuff around in your scene. And then object mode lets you edit it. Or was it? Nope, it's up here. It was make editable. That's what it was that did it. So whenever you're trying to think of something in 3D, it's about changing the vertex points, the edges, or the faces. 
Like, uh, let me change my camera view here. I think there should be a way to do that real fast. Let me see. Your four panel view is right here. So that's top. There's view right here as well. All right, I'm gonna look at this from the right. So I'm just gonna show you this real quick. If I move this point in, well, let me see if I can get both of them. Nope, okay. Let me give it a shot, no. All right, so if I move that in, as well as this one, and I do the same on the other side, So all I did was just pinch in the top from the side view. Now we've got a squared off pyramid shape. Can everyone see that? So 3D isn't just about changing something, but it's the view you're looking at when you change it, okay? So that might help you down the road when you're starting to think of stuff. Like uh, like I said, just pinching in from the side gave me the squared off looking pyramid or like a camping tent type of look. So that was the first thing I wanted to show you. And I'm just going to loosely go over some of these controls. And then we'll call it a night. Second. So I'm going to hit save. And I'll show you how to hop back and forth between them Thursday. So right up here, if you click and hold down, these are your object tools. They're also called primitives. And if you put any of these in your scene, it's instantly a 3D object. You don't have to extrude it like in After Effects. Does everyone understand that so far? Okay. So I just hit backspace to delete that. So I'll put a uh, put a cone in there. And it's instantly 3D. That's one of the big differences. And then we've got our gizmo or gimbal. Now, there's your move tool. This one's for rotate. And you can rotate on any axes you want. And you could also change the view you're looking at to rotate it better. You know what I mean? Like from the front, like such. So, and again, this is what changes to a four up view. This one's scale. And you could choose to scale on just one axis if you want. And then that's your render button to see what's actually going to look like in your scene. So those are your transforms, position, rotate, scale, right there. And you get your 3D objects from here. OK, this panel over here is called your object manager. So this is like the timeline sort of where whatever we add into the scene pops up here and I can select my objects this way or in the scene. Does everyone understand that? Okay, so the object manager is a list of everything in your scene. Below the object manner manager is the attributes panel. And this is where you can edit your geometry further. See like such. Quick tip, whatever you have in here will be different in your attributes panel. Like I'll get different attributes for the cone 
than I get for the cube. Can everybody see that? So if I go and put something like text, I've got completely different attributes in the attributes panel for the text than the other shapes in the scene. Okay. The timeline is down here at the bottom of the screen. So basically this is the program monitor, like your composition panel, object manager. This is where you stack things like in your timeline in after effects, the attributes change based upon what you've got selected and your timeline's right over here. You've got three different render buttons. This is quick render, shows you what the scene looks like. This is to actually render out the final version. And these are your render settings. And what do you mean by that? I click on it once, just like in After Effects, this is like your composition settings. And I just click the X to get out of it right up there. So this one's for setting up your scene. This is just to quickly render it. And this is to actually do the final render, that one. Any questions on that? And we're going to be going into this a lot deeper. I'm just giving you a loose overview of it tonight. So if I make a change to anything in the scene, like, uh, let's say I rotate this. I hit this quick render button to see how it affects the layout. And that's that. And I just hit undo like that. So that's your workflow. So I'm going to delete that, that, that. And I'm going to add a torus ring to this. Right there. Let me scale this up a little bit. Oops. There we go. I'm just trying to change my mode here real quick. OK, so under display, I chose garage shading. Just so I could see it's a little bit better. That's all I did was that was the display options to get out of wireframe. OK, so I got a Taurus and I've got selected right here in my attributes, the ring segments, the right here, the higher the number, the smoother it's going to look. So if I double this, it's going to smooth it out, whereas if I lower it, See what happens. You can even go into geometric shapes based upon how many segments you choose. But the higher the number, the smoother the round edges will be with your torus ring. So like I said, you could go all the way down to a triangle with that shape if you wanted to. But the higher the segment count, the smoother your geometry. And I mentioned this last week, but when you're working in 3D, you want to try and have your image, let's say your image, yeah. You want to have all your objects as close to real world size, just so it's easier to work on. Like here's your size here in centimeters. You could probably change your settings, probably in like edit preferences or something like that. But when you work one to one, it just makes it easier to keep everything real size in your scene. And it's also easier for other people to work on it. And you want to have the best looking geometry with the least number of segments to it, because the more you add, the slower your render is going to be. So this is garage shading and lines. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to change this from 64 to 300. See how much more geometry I just created there? That's 300. That's 64. Everyone see the difference?
the more geometry you have, the longer it'll take to render each frame. So it's a balancing of act of trying it to make it look good while also render fast. 3D will take a while. It's pretty intense. So let's add a camera. I clicked on the camera button here to add a camera. And if you don't want to re remember some quick commands, the camera tools are right up here. I'm just hovering over them. Zoom in, zoom out. Rotate the camera. Pan it from side to side. You just hover over here and move them. Or you could use keyboard quick commands to do that. The quick commands are hold down Alt or Option and click your left mouse to do an orbit or rotate. If you hold down Alt or Option and do the middle mouse wheel, hold them all down, that's going to be a tilt or a pan. And if you hold down Alt or Option and you click on the right button on your mouse, that'll zoom you in or out. And like I said, you could also just hover over these if you don't want to remember the quick commands. And again, this button right here, that's for your four view look. You just click it again to get out of it. All right, almost done what I want to cover. I'm just checking my notes. Okay, uh, to add lights to the scene, just click the light icon. And already, so I'm going to turn off my garage shading with lines. There we go. Since I'm in this view, I don't need to hit this to see what it's going to look like in the scene. The default is omnidirectional, like a light bulb. And that just shines light all around the scene. And you could color it if you want. Got hit OK there. Don't know why it's not showing me the color. There we go. Now it should be doing it. Now I see it update. So like I said, rather than having to keep hitting this, I just went display garage shading, make my life a lot easier. And if I go to the move tool, now I can move the light and we'll see in real time how it's affecting the scene like such. Okay, so I'm going to show you one more thing and then we'll call it a night. Let me see. Just got to find the thing I want to click on. Okay. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So we can see a little bit better. All right. Here's basically how you animate in... Cinema 4D. It's like After Effects, but with one big twist. And we're going to be diving deeper into this through the uh, next few weeks. So I'm going to click that button once of what I want to animate. Think of these as your stopwatches. I move my playhead. I make a change. This is yellow meaning a change happened, but a keyframe was not added. To add a keyframe, I click that same radio button one more time. So if I move, if I scrub with my playhead, there's my basic motion. After Effects, you click the stopwatch once, move, make your change, move the playhead, and it automatically creates the keyframes as you make your changes. 
with this software, you got to click the radio button each time you want to make a change. I mean, after each change. So if right here I want it to go, let's say up, I click there and then I make my change and I click the button again. So why did that one? So I go here. Oh, because it was on Y. Y was where the change happened. I'm a yo-yo. Okay, so I click on Y, go forward, make a change. Now it's yellow. Click there. And you can see my curved motion path. So click on the radio button you want, move the playhead, make the change you want, click that same radio button a second time to add your second keyframe. Any questions on that? Let's hit the space bar to preview it. And you can notice this renders your preview much faster than working with 3D in After Effects. And like I said, this was just an intro plus to see who can and can't run Cinema 4D Lite in After Effects because uh, we're going to be building off of this and it'll probably take us like two weeks to get through the stuff I want to show you. And uh, if there's time left in the semester, I'll show you a little bit of Blender because that's the free, very powerful 3D software and it's very good to know. All right, so any questions?